Mrs. Lewis, this is Dr. Hiley. Now, please, don't hang up on me again. It's extremely important. I'm leaving tomorrow. I've already let the servants go. I can't... I'm not suggesting that you change your mind at this moment. But please, come here tonight. Any time after six. Edna will have left by then. You can come in the back door of the clinic and then we'll... No, I don't want to. Just leave me alone. Vanjie, I can help you. Now, don't deny me that after all these months. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, let me try and create a moment of um, reverence, of deep religious devotion. Imagine, if you will, the sound of an organ, a chorus of voices singing Handel's Messiah. Yes, Handel's Messiah. This defendant deserves nothing less. For when he was asked what he was doing, running away from his elderly mugging victim, who lay beaten and bleeding on a sidewalk, he replied to the arresting officer, I am on my way to church. <laughs> Teddy Copeland, with three arrests and two convictions, was on his way to church. Teddy Copeland, picked out of a lineup by his victim, was on his way to church. Teddy Copeland, who had this unlicensed 22 caliber handgun on his person at the time of arrest, which Mrs. Rawlings has testified broke her jaw, was on his way to church. <laughs> Pat. Mr. Mayo. Yes. I want to thank you for all you did. With that guy in prison, I know I'm going to feel a lot safer. Well, you deserve to feel safe. I hope what happened to you will never happen again. God bless you. Uh, yes. Yes, I'm fine. Uh, goodbye. Goodbye. And good luck. Goodbye. Get the okay. Yeah, I guess my head's just uh, swimming in comments. It's a good thing you know how to swim. <laughs> Yes, come in. I'm leaving now, Doctor. Oh, and Mrs. Taylor would like her appointment changed from 10 to 10.30 tomorrow. Yeah, that'll be fine. Thank you. Goodbye. Good night, Doctor. You know I was gonna win. Played the odds. Mm. Well, champagne, candlelight, caviar. Looks like entrapment. You better believe it. Don't I'm going. Just a few I don't more. want to hear don't any more. Yourself. No, but I am please. going to see him. If I'm you, leaving if tomorrow. Wish. Mrs. Lewis, but please, listen to me. Listen to you. I listened and listened. Look at me. Look. Look at my legs. Well, Angie, you 
conditions are only temporary. I've told you that before. And trust me, swelling will reverse itself. Now please, sit down. I'll give you something to calm yourself. It's going to be all right. It's all right. I'm still going to see him. I understand, Vanjie. I think you should. Anything that will make you feel better. As I've told you before, I assure you, the swelling will go down. It's only a matter of time. Fatal words. I'm gonna have to go. I arranged the storm so you'd have to stay over. Since when do I need an excuse to stay over? Say so yes. Uh -huh. Court appearance first thing in the morning. A change of clothes or a venue. I have a suggestion. Why don't you stay over? How do you feel? I'm not sure. Do you remember me? Do I know you? The Pendleton case, I testified for you. Dr. Bauer. Right. What is this? Should I look any further? You're very lucky. You have a mild concussion, a sprained arm, no fractures. We've done a workup on you. We'll get the lab report in the morning. As for now, I'd say you need a good night's sleep, a couple days rest, and the prosecution will be back in business. Mm -hmm. Do I have to spend the night here? What's the matter? You don't like our hotel? I have a phobia of hospitals. Are you sure I can't go home? <laughs> Not tonight, Mrs. DeMaio. We'll be checking in on you during the night. Thank you.
that you've got to bed. You just had a bad dream. You were sleepwalking. Yeah, come on. Let's try and get a little rest, all right?
Benji? Benji? March 5th, 127 a.m. Experiment concluded. Patient Van G. Lewis expired after ingestion of potassium cyanide. I will now be able to complete my work. It continues to appear that although substance LM-177 has achieved near-perfect results in some, it can produce a toxic effect in others. Suspect causes hormone 12. By reducing the amount of this hormone by half, it is hoped to eliminate the danger to recipients and to the continued work of this physician. in the restaurant. That's where I thought mm -hmm. you left it. See ya. <laughs> See you later, dear. No, go right ahead. How's the wrist? Still sore, but uh, I think it's gonna work. Wanna lean back, please? Okay. Oh. Well, I see the swelling on your head is going down. Good. Okay, you wanna look right at my nose, please? Yes, sir. You sleep well? No worse than usual. I'll get a nap as soon as I get home. You did say I could go home today. 
That's what I said, yes. But something has turned up in your blood test that we'd like to look at a little more closely. Like what? Hemoglobin. Six grams per deciliter. That's a low blood count. See, I'd imagine you've been having feelings of weakness, dizzy spells, that kind of thing. I promise, on my honor, to do my duty and in the future always take my iron pills. Okay? No, you need more than iron pills, and I think you know that. I mean, this loss of blood has nothing to do with the accident. Severe hemorrhaging every month, especially during times of stress. See, the chances are it's easily correctable. It's a very simple operation. Any gynecologist will tell you that. Several have. Well, so why don't we take care of it while you're here? I'll refer you to Dr. Hiley. He's one of the best gynecologists around. I'm sorry, Dr. Bauer. I appreciate your concern, but I really do not have the time right now to have an operation. Well, it's your decision, of course. I'd rest up at home for one or two days before I went back to work. All right. Don't wait around too long for that surgery. Thank you. Excuse me. Could you please tell me what room Mrs. DeMaio is in? Okay, let me see. DeMaio. Yeah, she's in 22A. You go down that hall and it's on your left. Thank you. You're welcome. Just being overcautious, I'm fine. Are you sure you're all right? Yes. Stop worrying. Now, did you find my blue pants? Did they really say you could leave here? If you don't believe me, why don't you check it out? I know you so well. And I'm very glad you do. What's it look like to you, Doctor? <sighs> Looks like suicide, Larry. Blue lips and those uh, cyanide burns. I'll tell you what, we'll know more when we get her back from the postmortem. Well, I'll put these in your room. Okay, thanks. Congratulations, Miss DeMaio. This is Magazines Unlimited. You have won $5,000 in a trip to Hawaii. All you have to do is subscribe to our magazine for four... This is Mavis. Where are you? The messages are piling up and Ross is going out of his head. I hope everything's all right. It's me. I'm at number four winding Brook Lane. Incidentally, there's a dead woman here reported as a suicide. But it just doesn't look right, so uh, why don't you come on over? And there's a free lunch in it for you. Why don't you sit down and let me make you something hot, like a soup? No, thanks. You know, if you take one day off from work, the office is not going to fall apart. I don't think that's so. <laughs> Are you going to pay any attention at all? Yes, I promise. You need rest. 
and you stop thinking about work. Now, do you hear me? Yes, I do. I'm very tired, and I think that's what I'll do. I'll crash. Oh, no, no, not again. No. <laughs> well, thanks for everything. You're welcome. And look, I'm going to call you later, mm -hmm. and you better be here. Yes, ma'am. Bye. Bye. Yes, I'd like to rent a car. Morning. What happened to you? Fell off a cloud dreaming about last night. Never mind the jokes, how bad was the crash? How'd you know? Well, one, that looks like a hospital bandage. Two, the rent a car, which means your heap must be in the garage somewhere. Totaled. Ah, oh, I swear to God, I don't understand you. Something like this happens, you don't even tell me? I'm here to work, Richard. Just let me know what you got. All righty. This is Vanjie Lewis, Caucasian, 41 years old. Parrot cause of death, cyanide poison. You said something didn't work. Yeah, a lot of things. First of all, there's no sign of where the poison came from. Second, there's no suicide note. It's very unusual for a woman. Come on, don't put on your boxing gloves. Women like to leave notes. I can't help that. I didn't say a word. All right, number three, her shoes, too tight, too new, too dry. And what happened to the shoes she was wearing in the rain? There's no sign of those. Who found the body? Husband, Chris Lewis, airline pilot. Came in from a trip this morning. I've already told all that to the sergeant. I know that, Mr. Lewis, but I'm not the sergeant. So if you don't mind. I got back from Los Angeles this morning around uh, 6 a.m. Drove home and found her. Mr. Lewis, I'm Kathy DeMaio, district attorney's office. I'm very sorry about what's happened. Thank you. Do you know any reason why she did it? I don't know. I don't know. I've been asking myself all morning, was it my fault? Something I did or didn't do? I don't think I could live with that. She's been depressed. I... I didn't think this badly. Depressed over what? Come with me. She spent a lot of time in this room. She called it her cradle of life. Vanjie always wanted to have a child. She got pregnant the first year we were married. That's when we took these things out of storage. Things that were in her family for generations. We lost the baby. Tried for years to have another. Finally, she gave up hope. Got older, got nervous, started drinking. She wanted a baby more than anything in life. She went to Dr. Hiley at the Westlake Clinic. He gave her some treatments. For a while, she seemed better then. Then everything seemed to cave in around her. Her health, her spirit. Mr. Lewis, is that a picture of your wife? Yes. Who 
It's a lovely photograph. It was taken just before she got sick. When was that? About four months ago. We were up in Cape Ann. It was one of the happiest times of our lives. She painted, went fishing. That's about all there is to do up there. Mm. Thank you very much, Mr. Lewis. Get him out of here. Uh, Mr. Lewis, I have some papers for you to sign. Would you mind stepping downstairs with Lieutenant Wyatt and me, please? Certainly. I tried to hide something from him. Telephone number. Check it out as soon as I get back to the office. What do you think about that picture? Dynamite. Huh. I should look so good when I'm 41. The rate you're going, you'll never make it. Thanks. Lunch? Yeah, I'm starving. Follow me. I know just the place. Thank you, gallant sir. Half a tuna for half a ham. I've been offered a new job. Chief pathologist at Memorial Hospital in Seattle. When did that happen? Been blowing in the wind now for a couple of weeks. I got the offer in writing this morning. You do a lot of exciting work there, Kathy. Real frontier stuff. I think it's a wonderful job. It's a wonderful place. Come with me. Yeah, uh, great. Thanks for the offer. Sounds a lot like no. I guess it does sound a lot like no. I don't know. I can't leave Springfield now. OK, about six months, a year from now. Just tell me when. I don't know when. I have a life here. I mean, this is kind of a stunner, you know? You shouldn't push me. Seattle has nothing to do with it, does it? It's Charlie, isn't it? I don't expect you to forget him. I told you that. You had a wonderful marriage. That's great. That's rare. And I'd love you all the more for it. You still don't understand, do you? I'm trying. I'm not still in mourning for Charlie. That's over. But I have a life here. I have kept myself together by making a life. And I can't take a chance of losing it again, of having you and then losing you. A pretty healthy fella. From Blue Cross, think so. <laughs> How much she weigh? Um, 140. It's a little heavy for her friend. Well, she's all full of fluids. March 6, 2.47 p.m., postmortem of Angie Lewis, age 41, performed in the autopsy room of the medical examiner's office, city of Springfield. Physicians in attendance, Richard Carroll, medical examiner, and Benjamin Duffy, assistant. David's four copies conformed. Uh, this is for DeMaio. Is there any sign of her yet? Not yet. We've got messages all over town. Any news? Not a word. Good morning, Gloria. Good morning, Kathy. Kathy. Well, 
Where have you been? I've been calling all over the place for you. Had a little problem last night. Lost a decision to uh, some road equipment. When did Bridges call? Right after lunch, he wants to plea bargain. He says he has an offer you just can't refuse. You just watch me. <laughs> Kathy, are you feeling all right? Yes, honey, thank you. Fine. Um, there's a West Coast number I want checked out first thing. Sure. I want the party's name, and what, if any, connection they've got to Christopher Lewis's family here in Springfield. Address is 4 Winding Brook Lane. Got it. Is he busy? Oh, yes. Go on in. Well, how do I know what they're going to ask him? Well, that is up to the grand jury. Yeah. Where were you all morning? I had to send Steiner to argue a motion before Judge Felkin. And you know that Felkin can't stand him. I was at the Lewis house. The suicide? I'm not so sure. Richard found some stuff that doesn't pan out. Like? Like, uh, no suicide note, poison that comes out of nowhere, and a pair of shoes that don't fit. I want some time on this, Ross. I think we've got to murder one. Do it. By the way, there is a shindig for the mayor at City Hall next Friday, and we are all expected. I'll be there. Mayor. That sure does have a nice ring to it, doesn't it, Ross? I think you'd be very well qualified to run. <laughs> and leave this desk open for you? I've heard worse ideas. By the way, I'm basically fine. No uh, internal injuries, no broken bones. I don't think I'll take off much time from work. What are you talking about? My accident. Thought you'd like to know. You were in an accident? Moi? Whatever gave you that idea? Kathy, that 213 number belongs to a Dr. Emmett Salem of Santa Monica. Good work. He's Vanjie Lewis's uncle. Took the news of her death very badly. He's flying here tomorrow. He wants to talk to the district attorney. Why? Wouldn't tell me anything else. Mrs. DeMaio's office. One moment, please. Dr. Hiley's at the Westlake Clinic for you. Kathy DeMaio speaking. Oh, yes, this is Dr. Hiley. I understand you were in our hospital last night. That's right. That's what Dr. Bauer told me about your case. And he seems quite concerned. I must say, so am I. Yes, well, I appreciate your concern, Doctor, but uh, I really don't have any time at the moment. I wish we could at least discuss it. There are certain things about your condition I believe you should know. What things? Forgive me, Mrs. DeMaio. I know you're very busy, but they're not things we should discuss over the phone. How about five o'clock today in my office? Okay. See you then. Fine. Good. There you go. Excellent. No ill effects. I never felt better. I never looked better. And the baby? She is the joy of our lives, thanks to you, Dr. Harley. I didn't think I would ever be able to have a child at my age. We never give up hope at Westlake. Never. Now, we'll continue the treatment on a weekly basis. You say hello to that husband of yours, yeah. and take care of your baby, and I will see you Friday. Okay? Yes, Doctor. Good night, Edna. Good night. Doctor, could I speak to you for a minute, please? Yes, come in. About Mrs. Lewis's suicide. I heard it on the radio. That's terrible. Oh, she was such a lovely person. She used to stop at my desk and, and all talk very to me all the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the awful thing is, maybe I could have stopped her. If only I'd come back here sooner. What do you mean? Well, last night I went to Garrity's with my friend Mrs. Bauer for dinner. I mean, the food isn't too bad. Please and it's go on it. Anyway, uh, when she and I get together, you know how it is. We talk and we talk, and it must have been after 11. And then I came back to the staff parking lot, and that's when I saw it. Saw so what? Mrs. Lewis's car driving away. 
Mrs. Lewis here last night, are you sure? Oh, yes. Yes, I know her car. Uh, with the VL on the license plate, it was her. That's very strange. What would she be doing here so late at night? You see, that's what I meant. Maybe she was upset and she needed someone to talk to. At 11 o'clock at night. And she knew very well the clinic was locked after six. Oh, but it wasn't locked up. Of course it was. I locked it myself. Well, then somebody else must have unlocked it because she was here. She dropped this. Yes. You can go right in. The doctor's expecting you. It's the uh, door on the right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Dr. Harley? Oh, Mrs. DeVille. Oh, please sit down. Edna, I... would you bring me a cup of coffee? Yes, would I... you like some coffee? Yes, I would, please, Black. I've, uh, been going over your chart. Um, low blood count, falling blood pressure, periodic hemorrhaging. Mrs. DeMaio, a minor operation could correct these things easily. But if you continue this way, it's just going to get worse. I see you had some trouble last night. Due to dizziness, lightheadedness, distortion of vision. Those symptoms will only get worse from now on. Why do you choose to endanger your life? Because I don't like hospitals. We don't get along. You have something against us? Nothing that a couple of centuries of psychoanalysis wouldn't uh, clear right up. Tell me about it. I wouldn't want to bore you. There's not a chance in that. I'm very interested in what people feel about the medical world. When I was a child, I watched my father die in a hospital. I can still remember every detail of it. The way the corridors looked, the smell. We took him in, and he didn't come out. The same thing happened to my husband. So, you see, I think of hospitals as places of death, I'm afraid. That's what I'm very sorry. More often, they're places of life. Come in. Oh, thank you, Anna. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. I'd like to leave a little early, if you don't mind, Doctor. Mrs. Bower's going to drive me home. I don't feel up to driving myself. It's fine, Anna. Thank you. Good night, Doctor. Good night. Good night, Mr. Mike. Good night. My secretary is quite upset over this Vanjie Lewis thing. I'm afraid it has us all in a state of shock. Yes, her husband told me that you were treating her. That's right. Mrs. Lewis confided to me certain things. Perhaps you should know about them. Please. Well, as you know, her husband is quite a bit younger, ten years to be exact, and he's been seeing someone else. She thought she could change the situation, but that wasn't to happen. Well, that's something to be depressed about. Uh, here's my uh, number, private number, both home and office. Call me when you've changed your mind about the minor surgery. Thank you. That's not too late. Good night, Dr. Hyde. Good night. Will there be anything else? No, Amy, it's late. You can go home. Thank you. Good night, Mr. Marlowe. Good night. Oh, you look tired as me, Amy. Good night, Mrs. DeMarlowe. Oh, I catch you slaving over the hot desk. 
I've about had it, too. Yeah, me too. But I got some news on the Bangie Lewis case. Oh, yeah? What is it? Well, looks like those were crocodile tears he was giving us, old hubby. Turns out he was having an affair with an airline stewardess up to the time Banji died. Well, they taught me at school that's motivation for murder. That's what they say. It also ties in with something Richard sent me less than an hour ago. Cause of death, cyanide poisoning. All vital organs affected, burn marks on face caused by the poisoning agent. Suicide, doubtful. That doesn't make any sense. She took a swallow and some of it spilled on her mouth. What's that proof? A lot. The cyanide burns indicate that she drank it while lying flat on her back, which is a pretty nifty trick. Try it sometime. Anyway, Richard thinks that someone poured the cyanide onto her mouth after she died someplace else. Mm. Interesting theory, and very shaky to prove in a court of law. I'm gonna need some hard medical facts to back that up. We're gonna have to get them from somebody else. Richard resigned today. Richard? Cocktail olives, can of diet soda. No wonder you're anemic. Don't you keep any food in the house? What's this about you quitting? Well, I've had it. Politics and the red tape and the pressures from City Hall. And I've had it with the murders and the suicides and the teenagers killing themselves with cars. You know, if I have to stand next to another parent IDing some 15-year-old that was once a beautiful kid, I think I'm going to go for the cyanide bottle myself. I'll take care of the living, Kathy. I've decided to accept that job in Seattle. I would like you to come with me. And I can't make that kind of decision. Not now. Not now? You know, it's always not now. It's never no. It's always not now. You know what you do, Kathy? You offer a hope for the future, but the future never comes around, and that's not fair. Well, you're not fair to me. You make a decision, and you want me to start packing. Well, I've got 39 criminal cases and 22 appeals on oh, my desk. Oh, that's right, I forgot. Madam District Attorney, 20 prosecutions out of 22 cases tried. That's marvelous. Well, what's that mean? You resent my work? No, I resent being kept on a string. Every conviction, every case is a new excuse to stall, Kathy. Well, those cases are my work and my life. And you want me to throw away seven years in school and ten years working my way up and possibly being one of the only women district attorneys in the country oh. because you make a decision. Come on, Kathy. With your record, you, you could get a job out there in about five minutes flat. Sure. Take the bar again and start at the bottom. No, there's something else bothering you. Behind that battling prosecutor, I see a girl who is scared. Woman. No, girl. Scared of change. Scared of committing to another living human being. Well, I need that commitment. You know, I waited, Kathy. I waited for it. But I am not sticking around here any longer. Hi, this is Kathy DeMaio. Yes. Uh, I'm sorry to call you late at night. Um, I am sick, and I would like to see you as soon as possible. Of course, Mrs. DeMaio. First thing in the morning. Yes. Thank you very much. Good night. Richard, my good man. Thank you, sir. Benjamin. Thank you, thank you. All right, a toast. Um, to you, Richard. No, 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 to a new life in Seattle. Uh, All right, a new life in Seattle. Here, here. Not drinking, Ross? 
Well, I'm hoping against hope that you'll change your mind. Ah, I see. I believe the distinguished attorney has just implied that I am stubborn. Do you think I'm stubborn, Ben? You? Stubborn? Oh, oh, oh. I can well appreciate your shock and horror over that scurrilous inference. <laughs> well, if I'm going to partake in this comedy hour, I need a drink, too. It's just that I thought you would be interested to know before you left, that's all. Know what? About Dr. Salem. Oh, okay, I'll be the straight man. Who's Dr. Salem? Vanjie Lewis's uncle, who is flying in tomorrow from the West Coast, when he heard of Vanjie's death, he said he had to speak to the DA right away. However, that's all he would tell us over the telephone. <laughs> you sly fuck you. You really think you could hook me into staying on the job with this little puzzle? <laughs> I wouldn't do that to you. Anyway, forget it. To Seattle, gentlemen. To Seattle. How do you read this, Ben? What? This doctor. Salem. Yeah, Salem. Flying 2,000 miles to talk about Vanjie Lewis's death. Well, he must know something we don't know. What could he know that we don't? Mm -hmm. When I left the morgue, you were finishing up the post-mortem. Mm -hmm. Did you notice anything unusual? No, I saw the same thing you saw. Cyanide in the vital organs plus the evidence of the cirrhotic liver. If the poison hadn't killed her, then the liver disease was on its way. That's the same thing we've seen in a thousand drunks. Same thing. Which brings us back to question one. What does Dr. Salem know that's making him get on a plane and fly 2,000 miles? Maybe something we didn't notice. Or couldn't until we looked through a microscope. And we couldn't do that until the tissue sections were made into slides. That's two days till we get him back from the lab, at least. Unless we did them ourselves. Tonight. Ben, you're beginning to sound like me before I resign. Yeah, I really am, aren't I? Benji? Rick? What are you waiting for, pal? Oh, I don't know. Why did I say anything? If I just kept my mouth shut, you wouldn't come up with these things. You work too hard. You're always going. Mm. <laughs> That's nice. Two and another one, Bert. Oh, no. No, thank you, Edna. I have a fundraising committee first thing in the morning, mm -hmm. and you've got to go to work tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Work? You know, sometimes I forget it's work. It's like being a mother all over again. Edna, do I take two pills three times a day or three pills two times a day? <laughs> God bless them. I love them all. The young ones, the old ones, Angie Lewis, did you ever meet her? No. Such a nice person. She used to stop and talk to me all the time. Edna, please don't go through all that again. You're only going to make yourself sick. I am sick. I'm sick of just thinking about her. Poor thing. She tried so hard to make someone happy. But did he appreciate it? No. Some people are just plain rock. Well, I'm gonna hit a few things for me. Hey, what are you doing? I'm gonna tell someone off, that's what. Oh, I think you better go in and lie down. No, I'm not tired. Hello? Hello. Is this Prince Charming? Who is this? This is Edna Burns. Edna Burns from the doctor's office. As if you care. As if you care about anything. Now hang on. Prince Charming. Not even here to pick up Cinderella's slipper. Well, believe me, honey, I'm not keeping quiet. Edna, please. I'm going to tell everything I know, and I know plenty. All right. Now I think you should go to bed. Now. Oh, leave me alone.
Mm. Will you be sure to lock the door behind me? Bert. Thanks for bringing me home. I'll see you tomorrow. Take care, dear. Mm. Same thing with the lungs. Yeah, same as the coronary arteries. Atherosclerosis, negative. The stomach tissue was hemorrhagic. Yeah, but you'd expect that with cyanide. My own lab. Two assistants. Seattle? Yeah. I asked Kathy to go with me, Ben. Damn it, I wanted her with me. Is that so wrong? Well, I guess it depends on how you ask her. Did I ever tell you how we met? You know, on a criminal case. Different cases, same day. We fought over a parking space. <laughs> <laughs> guess maybe I did push her a little hard in Seattle. Richard, go call her. Tell her you're sorry. Back to work. Angie Lewis's liver tissue. Sure it is. No way. Ten bucks is you got the wrong section, pal. Ten bucks, huh? You lose, doctor. Liver section, Vanjie Lewis, removed 335 today. I marked this down myself. Take a look at this. These are normal cells. It's not a cirrhotic liver. Well, they sure look like one on the surface. Yeah, well, if she had cirrhosis once, there was no evidence of it when she died. Yeah, but then how do you account for all the other... all the other symptoms? The, uh, accumulation of fluids in her abdomen and legs? I can't. There's nothing here to explain it. It's not in her kidneys, it's not in her circulatory system, it's nowhere. Ben, what do we know about this woman? She was married to a younger man, she was afraid of losing him, Desperate for a child, depressed over getting old. All right, she goes to Dr. Hiley for treatments. What 
kind of treatments? We don't know. Yeah, but we do know that something was killing her before the cyanide got into her system. Something that looked like liver disease, but wasn't. Treatments. How much sleep do you need? I'm talking minimum. Five hours. Four hours. Good, because you're just about going to get it. Starting at 9 a.m., I want you to dig into every lab, medication room, and nurse's station at Cedars. I want to know what kind of treatments Dr. Hiley gives his older patients. Go on. Please sit down. Well, I'm happy to say I have no surprises for you, Mrs. DeMaio. I agree totally with what you've been told by the other physicians. After the surgery, you'll be feeling well again. Well, I guess we just better get it over with then, huh? I was hoping you'd say that. Betty, would you come in here, please? Yes, Betty, I'd like you to check Mrs. DeMaio into the hospital today. What time would be convenient? I could wrap up work around uh, 4. 5. Yes, Doctor. Betty, any news from Edna? Nothing yet. I've been trying to reach her since half past 9. I see. Thank you. I'm going to give you some medication. I want you to take two every hour. right up until the time of surgery. It'll give you strength. Starting now, Mrs. DeMaio. Yes. Yes, of course. Your office. Yes, miss. what is it? Right. Uh, what's the address? Okay, tell Wyatt I'll be there within a half an hour. I'm afraid it's bad news. Your secretary, Edna Burns, has been found murdered. This is Dr. Hiley. Mrs. Burns worked for him. Larry White, Detective Squad. This is shocking. Such a dear lady. Been with me for a long time. How do you read it, Larry? Intruder. Got in through the bathroom window. He came in here, found her sitting in the chair, watching TV. The TV was still on when we found her. Bashed her head in with a heavy object. Object not found. Motors? Yeah, that's a tough one. Has Richard been here yet? Yeah, Richard resigned. I thought you knew that. Right. And that's, uh, that's Bert Bauer. I told her to lock the door behind me. She's her friend. She was visiting her here last night. Oh, here's that uh, report you wanted on Captain Lewis. Thanks, Larry. Okay, let's get the body out. Mrs. Bauer? Yes. I'm Captain DeMaio, District Attorney's Office. This is Dr. Hiley. Yeah. I understand you were with Edna Burns last night. Yes, I, I drove her home from work. Uh, she needed someone to be with and to talk to. 
She was upset about something? Oh, yes, about the woman who killed herself. And she, Edna, had a few drinks when we got back here, and she was the old fashions, which she liked. And I tried to get her to go to sleep, but she wouldn't. She had to make this telephone call. To whom? I don't know. Somebody she called Prince Charming. No, it doesn't make any sense to me either. But she told him something about a slipper. A slipper? Cinderella slipper, she called it. Excuse me. Excuse me. We got a kid outside. Just across the street, said he saw a man here last night ringing the doorbell. Man's about uh, six feet tall, 30-ish, dark hair, medium build. Lieutenant? just found this after the body was moved out. It was wedged in the chair. Well, that's it. That's what she had in her hand, Cinderella's slipper. Yeah? It's DeMaio. I think I found something that ties in with the Benji Lewis case. I'm over at Edna Burns' house. I want to bring in Chris Lewis right away. That won't be necessary. Captain Lewis is sitting right here in my office right now. He's come to disclose the entire truth, as he put it. I'll wait till you get here before I take his affidavit. I'll be right over. I'm afraid I haven't been entirely truthful. Not to the police or to you, Mr. Mile. I said that on the day uh, Benji died, I was in Los Angeles. Uh, yes, I know, Mr. Lewis. But your flight was canceled, and you were in a hotel a few miles from here with the stewardess, Joan Moore. I got home around midnight. Um, found Benji dead. I knew there would be an investigation, so I went back to the hotel and told Joan to get out of town. You tried to hide a telephone number from me, of Dr. Emmett Salem. Why? I didn't know it was Dr. Salem's number. I I thought it was an L.A. detective agency van. She had hired to have me follow. She'd done that before. So she knew you were playing around. I was not playing around. I fell in love with Joan. We wanted to get married, but Vanji wouldn't give me a divorce. Did you go to see Edna Burns last night? Yes. What for? She called me at my home. She seemed to know all about me and Joan said she would tell everyone. I was going there just to ask her to, to leave Joan out of it, to, to offer her money if I had to. She refused? I never spoke to her. I, I, I rang her doorbell. No answer. And I, I tried her door. It, it was unlocked. Pushed it open a little. Saw she was dead. When Edna called you last night, did she tell you she found something? Something she called Cinderella's slipper? I believe it was dropped at the time of the murder. By you, Mr. Lewis? No. When you found out she had it, you had to get it back. Isn't that true? No. No. No, it's not true. I'll have a chance to refute it in court, Mr. Lewis. Well, I didn't kill her! Mr. Lewis, it is my duty to inform you that you are a suspect in the murder of Edna Burns and of your wife, Mrs. Banji Lewis. Are you all right? Yes. Hi. Uh, would you need some water? From Dr. Salem, put them in touch with Ross. If they need me, I'll be in Tuesday. Have a good weekend. Kathy, you've been looking rotten lately, and the accident was no help. You should get a checkup. Tell you a secret. That's what this weekend is all about. Are you going to the Westlake Clinic? 
How do you know? Ah, uh, just a guess. You've been there twice this week already, not counting the accident. I just assume you didn't tell any of the busybodies around here that they think I'm a basket case already. Sure. Good luck. Thanks. Well, your bag's all packed. Thank you. This isn't the end of the world. Got a written guarantee? It is only minor surgery. I think that's what Napoleon said about the Russian campaign. Oh, speaking of campaigns, how's Richard? It's all over. He's going away. Going where? Seattle. He's gotten a new job. And you're not going with him? Did you pack my slippers? I think those hospital floors are freezing. You're crazy, you know that? You're absolutely crazy. Richard, is the best thing that's happened to you since Charlie died. We talk about something else. Why don't you try and call him? Something else. No surgery. No Richard. No Charlie dying. Right? Right. That leaves aerobic dancing. That's vaguely amusing. I thought so. Hmm. I guess I'm still surviving. It's our newest wing. You're really getting the VIP treatment. The whole floor to yourself. Great. What's all this about? Dr. Hiley's orders. He says you have a low blood count. Good afternoon, Catherine. How are you feeling? I can think of some places I'd rather be. Mm -hmm. St. Jakarta. Oh, come now. It's not as bad as all that. You can think of something more pleasant. How about Lugano, Saint-Tropez, Lucerne? Have you ever been to Lake Lucerne? Mm -mm. Someday. You'll enjoy it enormously. What I'd really enjoy enormously is dinner. Who do I have to bribe around here? Oh, I am sorry, but we have to keep your stomach empty before surgery. Twelve hours before? There's been a change in plans. Your blood pressure's fallen quite a bit, and your hemoglobin, I'm afraid, is in the critical zone. It really is best we operate this evening. Where'd you find out? Well, Hiley's got several different kinds of treatments, but the women over 40 get shots. What kind of shots? Um, I don't know. The word is that he won't allow the, the formula to any hospital technician. How long has this been going on? Um, well, at least three years. Ever since Dr. Westlake died and Hiley took over the clinic. But this is the good part. In that time, Hiley has had five patient deaths besides Vangie Lewis. And in each case, he signed a death certificate himself. The cause of death? Liver cirrhosis. Come on. Oh, I know it's possible. Ross? Well, you're an attorney. You know I can't guarantee a thing. Ross, I gotta talk to you. Look, I'll have to call you back later. What is the matter with I got you? some new stuff on the Vangie Lewis case. I thought you quit. Hey, never mind about that. What I'm going to tell you, pal, Now, you listen to me. The Vangie Lewis case is all wrapped up. We put Chris Lewis before the grand jury on Monday. Well, you're going to look pretty stupid when they find out you got the wrong man. What are you talking about? A doctor performing illegal experiments on his patients. Five deaths besides Vangie Lewis. That's maybe six homicides. Yes? Dr. Salem just called from the airport. He's on his way in. Let me know as soon as he gets here.
Yes. Something's wrong with this phone. Oh, they're not hooked up yet. We've just opened this wing. Well, then, could you make a call for me? Hey, you shouldn't be thinking about business now. It's not business. I'd like you to call Dr. Richard Carroll. Another doctor? It's personal. Please, I just want him to know where I am. Mrs. And DeMaio. Tell him... I'll call Dr. Carroll myself. Keep posted on any new developments. That's a promise. You relax. Nurse, may I speak to you outside? Mm -hmm. Are you telling me that he has found a youth serum? I can only give you a theory. That he's found a substance that works on a portion of the brain, probably the hypothalamus. There are a lot of people that think it governs the aging process. Definitely the next frontier in medicine. I will say this. I saw a picture of Angie Lewis taken four months before she died. She looked like a woman of 30. And I know she was at least 10 years older than that. And that's the same age range as the other women that died. 40s, early 50s. Come in. Dr. Salem is here. Yeah, show him in, please. Dr. Salem, I'm Ross Marlowe, the district attorney. Yeah. Dr. Richard Carroll. Hi. How do you do, sir? And Dr. Ben Duffy. How do you do? We're sorry about your niece, sir. Sorry isn't enough. There's a criminal to be brought to justice, and I have facts and figures to support that. May I? Yes, please. I began putting all this together when Vanjie called me to tell me about her leg swelling up. She mentioned the shots that Dr. Hiley had been giving her. And I became suspicious, to say the least. I dug into his background. I found out he was born in Europe of American parents, went to medical school in England, and then went on staff at the Queen Mary Clinic in Manchester. It was at that clinic that his name was linked to a number of patient deaths. No proof could be found that Hiley was actually responsible. Nevertheless, he was asked to resign. Postmortems were done on the patients. In each case, their symptoms resembled liver disease. Let's reconstruct this. Hiley knew that if Dr. Salem here ever got a look at Vanjie, that he would realize something was wrong that would blow the whole experiment. So Hiley had to stop that. He had to stop her from going to the coast. And murder fit the bill just fine. Now, she must have mentioned that her husband would be out of town. So all he had to do was take her back to her place and make it look like a suicide. See if Judge Falcon is in his chambers. We need some warrants signed right away. Mrs. Dwyer. Come on. That's good. Very good. I don't have 
help you to relax. I'm afraid I can't manage it. I've got a full day on Friday. That sounds good. Talk to, uh, talk to Alan about it. Signed by Judge Falcon. Dr. Hiley's house, Dr. Hiley's office. The copy's on the way to Larry Wyatt. <clears throat> All right, tell Larry to hit the house. We'll take the office. See to Dr. Salem, will you? Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Marlar. Yes. About Dr. Hiley. What about him? Kathy hasn't been feeling well lately. She checked into the Westlake Clinic this afternoon.
Don't bother to scream. No one will hear you. I know you're frightened and you're in pain, but I assure you, the agony will not last long. Who are you? Richard Carroll, medical examiner. I'm Ross Marler, district attorney. Where's Kathy DeMaio? Ah, oh, yes. Well, that's exactly what I'd like to know. She was scheduled for surgical procedure this evening, but apparently she's left the hospital. What room is she in? Gentlemen, I don't understand this. What room? Room 312, the new wing. All right, I'll check the room. Mind coming with us, doctor? Upstairs is clean. So is downstairs. What'd you find in the garage? A uh, Mercedes and a Maserati, and that's not counting what he drives to work. My mother told me to be a doctor. Okay, let's wrap it up. Hey, Jim. Jim, come here. These are the files back there? You certainly may not. It must not be difficult. I do have a search warrant. Thank you. Patients. Scared patients, Doctor, and they make easy marks. They're looking for magic and they settle for a little sleight of hand. Ross, Larry, struck gold. All of it. Files. 
Audio tapes and a moccasin. Looks like a match to the one we found at Edna Burns' house. You found files, audio tapes, and a moccasin all in this house? Good work, Claire. Bring it in. Dr. Hiley, you're under arrest for murder. Any statement you I've make from me. I've already made my statements, Mr. Tomorrow. Someday they will speak for themselves. And there will be others to take up where I left off my work. My discoveries will be part of human knowledge for generations to come.